Good day everyone and welcome to Excel News, the weekly show that brings you all the important news and information on Battle of Excel. and this week has some amazing news, so first up with the smaller ones, with the new update we are also going to get some new 3D art for a couple items, in this case we get the anticipation of uh, the Mark of the Red Covenant which is the circle that you see over here, and also the anticipation and the surrender shields which look pretty amazing and if this one has actual flames on top it is absolutely amazing. Also this theory it's been said that it will not become part of the core game and that is for a variety of reasons. Uh, the first and the most important ones are the fact that the interface for the menagerie is going to need a lot of work uh, and constant changes, so it would require a lot of um, work from GGG, which can instead be put into other things, more efficient and more interesting. Also, Beastery, since it's very different from the core game, means uh, you, they will still need to uh, leave the tutorial in the game, and from a new player perspective, who, who actually are already overwhelmed completely when they start the game, adding also the Beastery thing uh, is kind too, it's kind of too much, so and the crafting will need constant rebalancing as well, either to remain relevant or not to be too strong. So all in all, what's going to happen is that Beastery is not going to be a core mechanic, and also it's most likely not becoming a Zana mod. However, there might be parts of Beastery that will be used in the future. We'll see how that goes, maybe reworked in some way. Also, we got another part of the skill revamps, and the first one is Incinerate, so Incinerate is again a channel skill now and uh, it works basically with a lot of smaller hits as usual where you have this a cone on the front and uh, the more you channel you have 8 stages and the more you channel the longer it grows also these uh, smaller cones on the right and the left they also grow in uh, length the more you channel of course the more damage you do and the longer the range also when you release it you release this, this shockwave you see here, which is uh, as large as the maximum um, length of the T-shape the that you have over here while charging. So if you don't charge much, this shockwave or firewave is not going to be uh, very big, but it is still going to be really strong. Also Infernal Blow is getting some love Basically with a new debuff that is applied to enemies that you actually hit yourself or hit with the Ancestral Call and uh, it's a debuff which stacks 6 times and uh, re either if the monster dies, if the debuff expires or if you reach 6 stacks the debuff explodes dealing a large portion of weapon damage in an area so this might actually be interesting, it's also a very good increase in damage for single targets because it's just a lot of added damage that you didn't have before. Freeze Pulse is also getting some love as well and basically uh, previously it dealt top damage right next to the target or right next to the player and dealt zero damage at the end of the path. Now it's only going to uh, funnel down to 50% of the damage so it's a bit less necessary to get a very very fast projectile and also GGG has increased the damage, flat damage to level it up with Frostbolt and Glacial Cascade which means that Freeze Pulse should actually be pretty good it also has improved in visual effects as you can see but anyway Ground Slam is also getting reworked or not even reworked but just improved now with a larger area, wider angle and improved damage. Uh, the skill has fallen behind significantly in power, no shit, they released just uh, Tectonic Strike which is pretty much Ground Slam improved, but we'll have to see how that goes, hopefully Ground Slam is going to be used again. And Val Righteous Fire is going to get improved as well, first up it's not going to consume all of your life, but just a part of your life and energy shield, and it's going to deal damage based on that. Also, it's going to add a short duration burning effect on enemies, which is also going to be based on the life and energy shield you lose. So that now it works very similar to Righteous Fire, which is exactly what GGG wants, so that you can use the same supports for the Val skill and the normal skill, which to be honest makes absolute sense and it's 
it, it was really weird that you have to have different uh, supports for pretty much the same skill. Also, if you want to have a bit more in-depth look into the new Incinerate and Ignite buffs, check out these videos by Ziggy D, which are 7 minutes long and it's pretty complete, so definitely give it a look if you are interested in knowing more. Also, of course, this is the big news this week and is the fact that the new league has been revealed and it's gonna be called Incursion and it's gonna be awesome. Of course, you can check uh, the random sites who cover pretty much the same thing uh, from each other. A couple of those have uh, very different videos, so it might be worth to just give it a quick look. But anyway, let's just check the landing page. Of course, there is a trailer which looks pretty damn good. So, also, countdown here. If you can't wait or don't really know when it's gonna start, well, it's 19 days from now and 5 hours. It's going to be on a Friday as usual. I don't, I really doubt GGG is going to change the time they release the league as they've been pretty uh, similar or pretty much the same for the past like 6 leagues or so. Also, this is what the league is about. Basically, there is this new NPC over here which will send you in the past into a temple when actually the temple was being built and what happens is basically this is a timed event where you just enter in area and you have uh, a timer that goes down the more monster you kill and the timer goes up it's kind of like a breach so that you have to kill the monsters and then if you can get to the end there is an architect which is a semi boss pretty much a unique boss let's say and if you kill it you get a chance to upgrade the temple and uh, after around 11 this i think they said or to 12 encounters with this npc here and 11 incursions into the temple you will have the chance to actually get into the real temple into the actual time where uh, depending on how you built and how you upgraded the rooms of the temple you will face different enemies and different problems different traps all the kind of stuffs however you will also get uh, very good rewards so you can choose to get extreme rewards. Of course, it's still RNG, so you can still get shit on, even if you get good rewards. But you will definitely have to face very strong enemies on the way. So it definitely looks really cool. The fact that you can kind of customize the difficulty around your character and customize the rewards you want. So uh, it's definitely something really interesting. We'll have to see how it's implemented, however, because 11 times before actually getting to the thing itself might be too long, might not be too long. It, it really depends on how it plays out. I really feel uh, most random players won't get the chance to learn how to actually uh, get good rewards and stuff. But still, it's definitely going to be really interesting. And well, all of these we already saw. And as you can see, this is how you customize your temple. You can see like this demolition lab number two it's probably been upgraded two times two times this one and office of cartography really it's definitely going to drop maps or something like that and uh, well after all of these upgrades you definitely you get to the end and you play into the real temple where you actually get real items and good stuff like this crazy stuff i mean this one 100% of physical damage from it is converted to a random element and always inflict an elemental ailment with it with this weapon also dealing increased damage to ignited frozen or shocked enemies I mean it, there's some really crazy stuff like this one you start with your energy shield at zero you cannot gain energy shield but you can get a lot of life regeneration if you have at least a certain number of maximum energy shield really weird one uh, you can also get random new stuff like this armor as uh, flat life and percentage life making it really really strong for life also new skills of course within most of those you can see how uh, the val skills are divided on the lower part and you have the purity of fire above and the val impurity of fire below also these are new val skills which are absolutely amazing they look way too strong to be honest. For example, this one with a base duration of 6 seconds, you and nearby allies are immune to ignite. 
Also, nearby enemies' fire resistance is ignored by hits, and this is retardedly strong. It's basically having an Inquisitor, except for fire damage, which is... I don't know, it feels so fucking strong, especially with the new Ignite uh, changes coming down. Also, Purity of Lightning's doing the same with Shock and Lightning, and I expect Purity of Ice maybe to do the same. That might be absolutely ridiculous, because it also means that you actually shock and freeze really hard, since uh, the enemies don't have resistances pretty much. Uh, we'll have to see how that works. Also. There is Val Blight, which is pretty much an, an AoE Blight, uh, who's also actually much stronger than Blight. And you can see this, this in the trailer video. I uh, definitely noticed that. It also, Lightning Spire Trap, new trap, which uh, deals damage pretty much around, uh, around the trap location, striking every 0.3 seconds. Who can also strike faster if you have more cast speed, which is interesting because cast speed definitely did not. Um, work for traps before, but now there are traps who actually are affected by cast speed, which opens up a lot, much, a lot more to elementalist using using traps instead of saboteur. Also, siphoning trap, which is a new one. You can see this a lot in the video, in the trailer, uh, which applies a beam to up to ten enemies, and uh, beside chilling them, which is actually pretty good because you can use uh, then some other support gems to deal more damage to chill enemies. It also regen life and mana to you based on how many enemies are chilled or rather tethered to the actual wire, which uh, definitely feels really strong as a support gem, not as a main damage, but definitely good support. We got a Blade Vortex, Val Blade Vortex. It's going to be a stronger Blade Vortex, nothing different there. Explosive Trap, which is a new trap, uh, dealing uh, physical damage, half of it converted to fire, would, uh, then creates explosions. Uh, I don't know, feels... it's probably going to be really strong, uh, it's nothing really new, to be honest. Flamethrower Trap, uh, definitely really interesting, you can see this in the video as well. To be honest, I'm really excited for this, because it looks really good. I wonder if you can have more flames for, for it instead of just four. And also another one that's improved with cast speed, because the rotation speed of the flames is improved by that, so definitely really interesting. It has more damage against burning enemies, so definitely can work in pair with other flame fire skills. Seismic Trap, which again you can see in the, in the trailer video, releases waves of damage pretty much, and it's purely physical. So definitely, uh, physical trappers are now viable with Seismic Trap, with the new Bear Trap, with some parts of the Explosive Trap. So definitely really interesting there. And the new support gem for traps, which to be honest is absolutely amazing and is a must use always, because you have 20% chance to gain a power charge and 20% chance to gain a Frenzy Charge when your trap is triggered by an enemy, which will give you basically permanent charges if you get a little bit of duration for both. Also granting 12% uh, to crit multi per power charge, which is absolutely nuts if you go critical. And you also have 6% increased trap throwing speed per frenzy charge, which again is absolutely nuts because trap throwing speed is a really good quality of life for trappers. So definitely an incredible expansion coming our way. There's new powerful items as well. Like as you can see these guys as a double corrupted implicit. So that's definitely really incredible. Bleeding cannot be inflicted on you. A new corruption. A new unique item that's way too strange. I mean chaos damage can ignite chill and shock. You gain so little when you use a Val skill. Although you have items and gems have 50% increased attribute requirements. That's weird. Also crazy belt here with like Percentage increased of life and implicit modifier magnitudes are tripled. So this belt gives a shitload of maximum life. Uh, actually, kind of like a belly of the beast in a belt, which is crazy to be honest. But anyway, that was all for this week. Really excited for the expansion. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment down below. Also, if you want to remain updated every week, be sure to subscribe to my channel. 
So that was all, I've been your host Dordo, and I'll see you guys the next time.